Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing very well. So today's video is a short but hopefully sweet one. We are focusing mainly on our eyeshadows today and obviously from the title you've seen we are learning how to build pigment in our eyeshadows and make our colours pop. So this is a question I get asked a lot on Instagram like in DMs and things like that and when I'm teaching lessons by students like how do you build colour up and make it stand out and pop. So I decided to create a video on it because it's easier for me to show you than try to explain. If you would like to see how to build your eyeshadows, create nice pigmented eyeshadow looks without any fallout please keep on watching hey guys so i look crazy right now so i'm going to dive straight into this tutorial so one of the main things that you're going to need in order to make your eyeshadows pop and look more pigmented is an eyeshadow base so i don't know if you can see on camera the discoloration in my eyelids so i've got really really prominent veins in my lids a eyeshadow base allows that just to become a complete blank canvas so if you've got like dark spots or anything like that any discoloration in your lid is completely gone and it's just a flat blank base canvas for our eyeshadows to stick to today i'm going to go in with the p louise eyeshadow base and this is in the shade number two rumor and i'm just gonna grab that on my flat concealer brush and start getting that all over my eyelid If you can't get your hands on this base, other things that I tend to use, I've, I use either the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer or the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. Or if I'm going for a more softer look, I'll just use whatever concealer I've thrown on my face that day. So see, I've just taken a nice thin layer there. I haven't taken too much at all, but you can see all those veins and discoloration have gone. And one thing I just would like to make sure and do is just make sure these edges are blended. And then I just like to give a little pat over with a fluffy brush just to make sure that there's no creases there's no little patches or anything and everything's smooth you need to leave it wet so this allows the eyeshadows to really stick to that wet base really pop their pigments show their true color allows the color to really deepen and show up on the eye so for my eyeshadows today i'm going to go in with the be perfect cosmetics and stacy marie carnival xl pro palette and i'm first going to start off with that shade reckless and i am going to do a technique called reverse blending so i don't know if you've heard of this before or you know what it is but basically i'm going to go with my darkest colour first and work my way to the lightest. You want your darkest colours to be the most prominent and you want them to pop the most. So I'm going to start with my darkest colours so that they stick to the base the most and that really allows me to build up the pigment with that darker shade rather than trying to build it on top the other shades. So if I started with my yellows first, I would take up a lot of that stickiness with that yellow which is pointless because I don't want that to be the brightest. I want the darker shade to be our most prominent. Taking a Morphe M507, I'm just gonna dip into Reckless and I'm gonna start packing that onto my crease. So the way you apply your eyeshadow is really important too. So you don't wanna go in and start wishy-washing all over. Number one, that could absolutely ruin your base. And number two, you're not gonna get any color payoff from that at all. So you want your colors to be strong. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the eye wiggle it and then take it off and move it press it and wiggle it and take it off and go back for more press wiggle take it off and my aim is to build up that color right around that socket so it's completely and 100 percent opaque so you cannot see through that color at all you don't want to see any lighter shade you don't want to see any patchiness you'd literally want that to be the same level of pigmentation the whole way around the eye. So see how dark that's coming up already. Just so you can see what I mean, I'm gonna do on this in a half, I'm gonna do some like slight window like motions just so you can see the difference.
So if you look, so I'm going to look dead into the camera. This half is pressed and wiggled, so I've taken time to build up the pigment, packed it on and slightly dispersed it. So you can see that it is completely solid colour. Whereas this half, I have gone in and done slight window wiper motions. You can see the colour level is nowhere near the same. Our blend is quite patchy. We want to press and wiggle. And like I said, I really do just take my time with this, just building it up. It's worth taking the time. So once I'm happy with how that pigment is looking, I'm then going to go and blend the edge of this colour so that it's a bit softer when we go in with our other shades. When you're blending, you don't want to blend on the colour you've just packed on. So if you start blending in here, you're going to knock off all that colour you've just worked on building up. So you want to make sure you're keeping your brush right on that line. Can you see? So it's right on that line. And I just go back and forth. So this is where the window wiper motions come in handy. So I just make sure to go back and forth and I'm going really, really lightly back and forth along that line just to slightly soften it out before we go in with our orange. Like so. So you can see that line is just starting to disperse ever so slightly. And we've still got quite strong base there. Moving on to our orange tone. So I'm going to take the exact same brush, another Morphe M507. This is the M506, but they are the exact same thing. And I'm going to go in with our orange. So I'm going to take this shade Lit from that same P. Louise palette. And I'm going to repeat the exact same process I've just done with the darker shade. So I'm going to press on and wiggle it. We haven't put eyeshadow up here yet. Our orange will still be sticking to that sticky base. I'm just really building up that colour. And I'm only going in with small amounts of eyeshadow. I'm doing like one dot in the pan at a time. So you want to be going in little and often rather than all at once. And then you're stuck with all this pigment that you can't get rid of and can't blend. With these techniques as well, you really don't need to be like digging in the pan. I literally do, literally do a dab in and that is it. Before I learned this technique, I look at some of my old eyeshadow palettes and they're just powder everywhere because I used to be like that in the pan to try and get as much on as possible. And that's why I'm also brave enough to do these with my face makeup already on now because I know I'm not gonna get fallout because you're not going in with enough to generate fallout. So I'm just blending that line out again once I'm happy with the colour payoff. Now for our lightest shades, I'm going to go in with the yellow from the palette and that is the shade Keen. And this time I'm going to switch to a slightly fluffier brush. So I'm going to take the Molly O'Brien Char Char brush. Because like I said, we don't need our yellow to be our strongest colour. We just want that to sort of soften the edges of our orange. So the way I apply this shadow is going to be different as well. So I'm not going to be pressing and wiggling this time. I'm going to buff this onto my eye. And like I said, because we've not put any eyeshadow up here yet, we've still got the stickiness of the base for that yellow to stick to. So just going back to reverse blending. So if we'd gone in with this yellow face, we would have been very liberal with it and just popping it everywhere. And no doubt we would have got some fallout and you wouldn't be able to see your shape properly, so you wouldn't know exactly where you want to put it. But no doubt we would have got some that will drop down, so that would have taken away stickiness from our orange. So when we put our orange on, the same thing would have happened, and that would have taken away stickiness from our purple. Reversing it just helps keep that stickiness of the base for our colours. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? So see how much time I'm spending in this one spot, just really building up the colour. So I'm kind of just doing like a press, like a sort of press and buff mo moment now rather than press and wiggle. So I'm sticking to the one spot until I'm happy that I've built it up enough to then move on to the next spot. how our yellow is still nice and strong but obviously it's not as strong as our darker colours because obviously it's our lighter we don't need it to be as deep so just to reinforce that our other shades are going to pop and to make sure everything's blended we're going to go back down our levels so we've gone 
up our levels we're going to go back down now so i'm going to grab the orange brush and i'm just going to put a tiny little more on my brush and i'm just going to go over and because we've already got a layer of the color there we don't need to spend hours building it up it's just going to reinforce what was already there And then same again with our darker shade, so that shade Reckless. Again, because we've already got a layer there, this just helps to reinforce that colour. So that is it in terms of packing on shadow and blending and things like that but you can see already how prominent our colours are and how much they stand out and pop on the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the eye. So to cut the crease I'm going to use the P. Louise Basic Pastel Eyeshadow Base and this is in the shade Vivid Violet. Then I'm just going to pop on some of that pigment and I'm going to use the Peaches and Cream pigment in the shade Fantasy, which is this beautiful, like, white reflect purple. So I'm just really pressing that onto the lid just to make sure it sticks and also that so that we don't get pigment fallout all over my face. So for the under eye, I'm going to go with the same process. I'm going to go darkest to lightest. God, I have started noticing extra fine lines and wrinkles on this area. So that is it for the eye. I'm just going to pop on an eyelash, some eyeliner, and I will be right back to round things up. And that is the finished look. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative interesting i'm thinking of doing like a full in-depth face and base routine or highlight and contour things like that because that's another thing i get asked about a lot so if you would like to see that video please sound off in the comments below and let me know i hope you enjoyed this video thank you again so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye